Here it is again, Eternal Tome and Healing Tome on the Warden. That is such a strong combination with the Root Riders. Look at this insane roster. Rigo Torres, Yada, Achilles, Haroya, Muhammad Marawi, but the All-Stars roster is stacked as well. All of the big esports ores kind of like dissolved and then reformed into new teams once Town Hall 16 came out. So this is the dawn of two new teams with one holding a familiar name there, but let's see what Ninja can do. One of the youngest players out of North America and a rising star himself. Let's see what he can do here for All-Stars as he dives in with a Queen Charge into Root Rider attack. Let's look at the hero equipment here so we see what we got. We have a level 20 Giant Gauntlet. We have basic equipment for the Queen and a Healing and Eternal Tome for the Warden. And I think that's a good choice here when we decide to run the Root Riders, especially if the Root Riders are going to be running in a separate stack there from the Queen. Like, if they're going to be stacking on top of the Queen, then something to just boost the healing output from the healers could be beneficial, like Rages or Rage Gem. But I think if they're going to be running as a separate group and the Queen Charge is going to be doing her own thing independently, then the Healing Tome and the Warden can be very, very strong to keep that big pack alive and the Eternal Tome along with it. It's a very strong combination. So just maximum efficiency or maximum effectiveness out of that Warden. But he's got to get the Queen Charge right to, or it doesn't really matter. Queen Charge making her way towards the Scatter Shots, towards the Town Hall. Here comes a Battle Drill up at the very top of the base there. Going to go in and get the Expo that was dragging behind. And the Root Riders will all go in together with the World Champion and the Warden. Notice on the pets here, we have the Diggy on the Grand Warden. We have the Spirit Fox on the World Champion. A very, very effective combo. And then regular Hog Riders. Going in on the flank of the Root Riders so they don't have to leave the base to go after those straggling extra defenses out on the left side. I like this combo so far. Very, very strong setup here. The Valdrill makes it to the core of the base there. We'll take a couple stuns. He's got freezes locking that area down. And the Eternal Tome and Healing Tome are active. Or really, the Healing Tome is as the Warden Eternal Tome wears out there. But yet, he's dropped out of that battle drill and will now support. And everybody stayed nice and healthy there. Like these. Root Riders already have a pretty big HP pool, but if they start to dwindle down and start to get low, then you just you make them all invincible. Then while they're invincible, they all heal up, and then they continue to heal for another like 15 seconds afterwards. And it's a very, very strong combination, and this one allows him to swag his Royal Champion ability. Completely crushed there. That's how you get it done. Root Riders with the Healing Tome, I think, is going to be a big, big part of the meta for the people who leveled it up. Nice job, Ninja. Achilles will dive in here for early attacks. We've got ourselves a Queen Charge into Lalo. King, obviously running that giant gauntlet there, level 14, but he maxed out his Rage Gem before he pushed that up to a higher level. He also maxed out his Invisibility Vial, and he pumped some points into the Archer Pump as well. Warden just left with basic equipment here, which is pretty normal here for a Lalo attacker. If you are a Lalo attacker or a Hog attacker or a hybrid attacker, then the base equipment of the Warden is still, in my opinion, your best option. I think the Healing Tome works great with those very high HP troops so you can maximize how much you're getting out of it. But um, in that same case there, the Life Gem does not get a lot of effectiveness on the high HP troops because of its cap. But on like medium HP troops like Balloons, then the Life Gem is extremely good and you don't really want to deviate from that too much. But let's see if the Lalo can push his way through the Town Hall. Get that uh, model in the core of the base there that could potentially cause some problems. The Queen's is kind of staying clear of it right now, so that's good. Balloons will take the Town Hall, and the Balloons actually split and go over to the model, so that's perfect right there. Underworld abilities, they should be able to take it down there, and he comes in behind the sweeper there. Range up the Queen, right as she engages the defensive Queen. Good timing on that. And it looks like the, uh, the original Queen skin, by the way, I think. Is that the first Queen skin that was ever released in the game? And it takes on the newest Queen skin. <laughs> By the way, if you're picking up any of the new skins or scenery packs there, then use code ERIC and help support the channel. I really appreciate it. But it looks like Achilles has made quick work in this base as well. And that means with this one, not just Wagon Row Champion ability, but also a Queen ability, he's uh, kind of outdone what we just saw out of the Root Riders because he has that, but he also has eight balloons that he never deployed at all. So he can swag all of that. And then we can pass it back over to All-Stars and we'll see what they can do with it. But if we do end up going 
into a double perfect war that I feel like they can't waste any efficiency because I know that both of these teams are perfectly capable of getting a perfect war tile 16. So if you are doing anything that slows you down, then it might work against you in the long term. But he, he holds his abilities all to the end there and that could cost him precious, precious time. And we'll see if that becomes a factor later on. This name is deceiving. Synthe is no longer part of Navi. And he's now playing over in All-Star. So I guess he's going to have to go get a name change in game there. But he's going to be setting in, it looks like, a Super Archer. Yeah, Super Archer. I was waiting for it to be Super Archers or Super Minions. But he does invest the Warden to deliver that in. And he also put the Rage Gem on the Warden. So just go ahead and, like rage up the balloons that you drop in with the warden it's a smart thing to do there so they get a little bit more value and they you can get you can get more damage while you have the eternal tome active with just a couple of balloons and make sure that you get those down also it also would rage up any headhunters i guess if you want to go after a defensive hero although he did not go after any defensive heroes other than no he didn't get any of them i'm looking for if the king went down the king's still standing down south so all heroes are <laughs> still standing oh my gosh all right, well, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, this uh, Titan and the Apprentice Warden are kind of wandering off right there. The Ice Golem went over there as well. Maybe they can get that Ricochet Cannon down. If they get the Ricochet Cannon, they could probably get the Multi-Inferno down. And he does. Okay. He lost the extra benefit of the, uh, the Apprentice Warden there for his other heroes. But getting those big defenses might be worth it. Our champion joins into the right side of the end. He'll go ahead and swarm into the defensive queen over to the far right side of the base there to clear the way for the world champion to move through. Queen lost her unicorn. She's a very low HP and she's kind of stuck behind walls right now. She can't reach anything. She'll have to go through another high level wall to get to her next targets. Our champion over the right side has the spear fox. She goes invisible and passes all the ground skellies over to the lecture titan, which ends up taking them all out there. RC now will make her way in to the most threatening defense left on the base here. It is that monolith and she steps in and she takes it with ease. She's got plenty of HP pulled through. She's, she was able to preserve. And that Titan, that Titan over here came in absolute clutch. Not only taking out those key defenses, but then saving the road champion as well. So it's another triple for all stars. Yada in with a Groove Rider attack here. Start with the Yeti bomb. Just going to be dropping in the Yeti Bomb to go get the Inferno out of the way there. And also just clear the Kamaru. Get the Clan Castle pulled. Get the Rage Tower pre-triggered. I mean, lots of different functions being achieved there by that Yeti Bomb. Which is why we love that attack. We love that setup. But that does mean that the Queen is going to need to do a pretty significant charge here. All the way across the base here and reach the Town Hall takedown. We have the model in front of the side of the Town Hall. We have... The invisibility tower right next to the town hall. So that's going to be potential trouble there. But he's got plenty of spell support here. Two rages and two freezes. Is that going to be enough though to still then have the utility of spell support for the root riders once they deploy? Let's look at the, the hero equipment. We got the giant gauntlet on the king. Basic equipment on the queen. And he is running once again. Here it is again. Eternal Tome and Healing Tome on the Warden. That is such a strong combination with the Root Riders. And we're seeing it repeating. And that is a sign that this is something special here. We should be paying attention. So we can make her way forward. She's going to potentially have to do a wall break here soon. Obviously, the Rune Rider is not re really worried about wall breaks, but the Queen does go ahead and rage up again. That's her last rage, so we're going to be careful now because she is still having to get through the Invisibility Tower and the Town Hall takedown. But he gets the Invisibility Tower pretty triggered, and he gets the wall break on the outside of the base there to get the Queen to turn back, and the King cuts off her pathing. Perfect. There's the Eternal Tome. Now watch the Healing Tome. Everybody got kind of weakened up there. Then they go Invincible. They get topped off, and then they continue to heal for the next... Roughly 15 seconds. So that gives him tons of cover, tons of time. And he just needs to make it through this very top compartment there. But once again, we see the Spirit Fox on the Road Champion. However, on this one, he is running the Frosty on the Warden. I feel like you should be running Diggy on the Warden in this specific uh, attack with that lineup of pets. But it looks like the Root Riders are getting it done into the Monolith. It's another triple on the board here. And with 30 seconds to spare, we'll start to track time. Because time is looking like it might be significant if 
everybody's gonna keep on just overwhelming bases the way they are so nice job from yada yada happy with that one i'm sure and it looks like overall time is in the advantage of all stars right now Returning fire will be dark star formerly was playing for strut now onto this new all-star lineup let's see what we could do with a bit of lightning a lala with some super barbarians and giants to support here but lightning just used to take out the defensive queen and no quake being used on that one or did he no he used a quake okay he did use a quake and he was able to take down what did he take down there scatter shot looks like he went after the scatter shot with that i'm like wait does does six lightning take out a max level queen i guess it does or i'll, I'll look at the spell out there at the end here to to double check that but i i wasn't sure how many lightning you need directly to take out the defensive queen with the new level of lightning and i guess that would be important information here but flame finger is set up there by the expo that he took out and now the flame flinger will push you to get the multi inferno down if you get this other expo under control that'd be even better but doesn't look like he's worried about that right now skeleton spell drops in ice golem tanking the monolith there but how did it switch off of the ice golem it was i swear it was target onto the ice golem maybe there was a giant in front of it you know that's what it was he had a giant that went down and then the ice golem which is generally just a smart thing to do there because then if you have spring traps in the area then the giants hit them because they walk slightly faster than the ice golem so just a smart play right there the king under the giant gauntlet is able to step four level 15 on the giant gauntlet queen running basic equipment and warden maxing out life gem because life gem pairs best with lalo and also go for the high level of turtle tome the king under phoenix able to finish off the town hall and the queen will pop the hound and maybe she can get a little bit more, but probably not. She could get all the lava pups out of the way there, which would be great. And the Phoenix is clearing a bunch of the traps there around the town hall. If you get more, that'd be OP right there. Watch for radar bombs right there. Anything that it gets right there is uh, is just bonus because that's less that are going to the balloons here. But over the left side of the base there, it does look like the flame flinger opened up into a dragon rider, which will go get the ground expo and the, the ricochet cannon down, which will save some health on the world champion when he gets over there. But the balloons pushing across the base here without any issues and overall pretty fast as well pops his rc ability get it done faster and with how much time to spare 40 45 47 <laughs> okay 42 seconds to spare there i was counting up and i should have been counting down <laughs> nice nice uh, attack there from dark star they got three of the board here the war remains perfect Rigo Torres in for the next one. Early attacks is obviously picked up some players that were formerly from Strut as well. So this is kind of fun because Rigo Torres and Darkstar played as teammates under the Strut banner when they played in the World Championship. So very, very exciting to see them on opposite sides of the field played against each other. But Rigo Torres able to get a successful Skelly Donut to take out the Monolith and the Clan Castle. Now here we go with the Lalo. I assume Life Gem, Life Gem is correct there. Life Gem with the Turtle Tome, still the best equipment for the Warden for a Lalo attack. For a Hero Dive, I mean, until we get the frozen arrow, then this is still the best equipment for the queen, in my opinion, as well. I see some people run that giant arrow like Synthay, but for the most part, this is going to be the best combo until we get that frozen arrow released. And then over to the king, this is where he's been pumping his points, and he's got his giant goddess. The king surges forward there. King, king of the north? Yeah, all right. <laughs> if you pick up the gold pass there, or if you pick up any gold pass, or anything for the shop, then use a crater code. Actually, Rigo Torres has a creator code as well so you could use code rigo or you could use code eric and pick up your gold passes and get your own king of the north right but he does go to freeze up the sweeper and the multi as he comes out of the ward ability and he did use the blimp protected under that ward ability to try to get the town hall out in front of the pack there because if you do that then you're able to get that poison to start to take away there before you get all the way up into the poison and have the balloon soak it but he does have the world champion joining the left side of the base now he's got seven more balloons on standby he'll start to collapse those around the outside he just mainly needs to get the defensive queen under control and if he gets there out of the way then he's in a good spot where a champion steps through and she's got the spirit fox i'm surprised we're seeing so many of these guys running spirit fox over the diggy but we are seeing a lot of it i i'm honestly surprised that anybody would ever put away the diggy but you know i mean 
they're getting it done. And this one is another very, very fast one. In fact, it's faster than the last one. So Rigo Torres has just made up a significant amount of time. And that puts our average at a five second split right now. All-Star still leads by five seconds on average attack time. Let's dive into Uriam. And if you guys didn't know, both Strut and the former Millisim MG both disbanded. And so you're seeing all the players from those rosters bouncing around here. And Uriam has been a staple on that French team for a very, very long time. But now joining into this international roster. And it looks like his attack is going to be a Rue Rider, Super Archer Bomb, and Super Barbarians. Honestly, I really like this combination. Might have been a little bit better there if he could have got the shots to go through the Town Hall and get the Monolith on the other side there, but... Battle Builders will repair that damage. Was able to clear out everything at the very bottom of the base there. There were, like, uh, archers that were cloned and then spawned inside of the Rage Tower compartment there. And maybe he thought they would shoot through the Town Hall and get the Monolith down. But either way, he's gonna have to deal with it now, and that's gonna be a, kind of a pain because it's in an awkward position, and he needs to figure this out. Otherwise, it could ultimately cost his team the war if it continues with the trend that we've been been seeing here i'm like i'm very i'm very worried about that right now but the king of pop is ability king takes the lead level 19 giant gauntlet queen with a leveled up invisibility vial and the warden with a maxed out eternal tome eternal tome seems like it's a piece of equipment that i think is a pretty safe one to just max out in general but he does have an opportunity to get to the model there with some super barbarians let's see if he decides to do that or if he decides to support on the outside of the base there. But one Super Barbarian has reached the Monolith. And it looks like he does distract it for just a moment. But he's going to have to go back for it. Roar Champion already deployed at the very top of the base there. Got two more Super Barbs. I feel like you just got to just send it into the Monolith right there to have a chance to get the space down. Because it is just wreaking havoc on these heroes as he wraps around. And he's in real, real trouble here. Still got that Queen ability though. We'll pop it now. Queen will escape the Monolith for now. And maybe get a little bit of a regrouping here, but the World Champion has to pick up most of the slack here. She kind of just needs to get her shield to survive long enough so she can take a strike in there. But the model locks onto her as well. She's forced to pop it early. And now the final approach here. Diggy, get in there. Take that stun! And that's why we love Diggy! Shut it down! And then take it as well! And it's a triple! Urya pulls it back! And now, one of the rising stars! that was on this early attacks roster while they played in the world championship he's been busting out those crazy battle drill attacks for a while what do we call that the heroia smash but now heroia uses some lightning and he's going for the lalo for hair equipment we're running life gem of course because it's the lalo basically to the queen and looks like a level 13 giant gauntlet for that king just go ahead and use the king to connect to the hole that's created by the lightning there's only non-defensive structures from the line from the hole that was created down to the edge of the base there so he should be able to control the pathway for the lalo but he needs to send lalo in from the left side he has a blimp and i feel like if we want to use an early ward ability which i would say that we would on this base here that we use a blimp protected under the ward ability and send it towards the town hall because we got the rage tower there so it makes a lot of sense to do it like this but he also gets in a headhunter under the ward ability but the headhunter i mean honestly it's not going to do that much it doesn't have the time of invinci invincibility to get all the way to the world champion over there, but have to find another answer for her. But he does secure the title takedown with the blimp, and he will coast his way into the two back end multi infernos. Uh, watch that defensive world champion. He's got a skeleton spell on her right now. There comes more headhunters in from the left side of the base there, and looks like he should get her under control here. The core of the base here is holding strong, and the world champions have to pick up the slack there. But I'm a little bit concerned there because we got the king right there as well. RC is on the left. And keeping a little bit of distance from the king, but she needs to get the multi down on the left side. And she's going that way now, but the king's on his way to intercept her. Come on! Go invisible! Okay, king steps off. She's following. Warden, warden, warden takes the multi! And the defenses are cleared. And time is in their favor still on this one as well. They are getting these done and not just getting the triples, but getting it done with speed. Over a minute left on this one as Aroya will potentially level out the time. Where are we sitting right now? It's got to be close. It's got to be really, really close. There we go. Time has now shifted. And early attacks is ahead by three seconds.
if you average that three second average over the four attacks then they are roughly 12 seconds behind we can see a more accurate split of the time on the scoreboard above my head here because that is the total number of seconds divided by five so it looks like we're actually oh man we are so insanely close i can't even tell i, I don't know exactly how close the time is but it's got to be around 12 seconds in the total. It was three seconds on the average. But we'll see where this one lands. And obviously, at this point, you got to get the triples on the board because early attacks is not slowing down. But Super Bowlers will make their way in. He attacks the Clan Castle side of the base there. If you're going to use Super Bowlers and you expect to have Ice Golems on defense, you, you might be tempted to attack the Eagle Artillery side of the base there to stop that fire, but actually attacking the Clan Castle side of the base there makes you get Ice Golems out of the way before you get in the core of the base there. So now we got the Giant Gauntlet getting some crazy value with the King right there with level 16, maybe with a higher level of her invisibility vial and the high level Eternal Tome right here. The base equipment is still good for Super Bowlers, but honestly, the... The healing tome has also been quite strong with his attack as well. So you got some options there. But he needs to get this core cleared out here. Roar Champion moving it from the top of the base there. She's keeping herself protected by going invisible there with the Spear Fox. No digging inside of this one, but does get the Expos down. Still alive here. Still moving. Queen Pops her ability. He's got to get the cleanup done to the top side of the base there. That's his biggest problem right now. Time is of the essence. And Fluxy is looking like he's going to get the base cleared. But I don't know if he's got this done quick enough to really be competitive if we see another triple at the same speed that we've been seeing out of early attacks. So I'm a little bit concerned right now. But he's got the time. He should be able to get the triple here. But he didn't bring a lot for cleanup. He waits until the defenses are down. And then he drops in a balloon that he held on to to start to clean up on the top side. But we have to see where the time ends up here. But we also, since it is a triple, we would have to still see a triple out of early attacks to make this significant. But actually, this is clean up a lot faster than I thought. Maybe he's okay. He's got 40 seconds of countdown. Yeah, he's actually cleaned up way faster than I expected. Hold the front door, guys. They're still in this. 30 seconds to spare. Looks like, okay, 27 seconds was left on the clock there at the end. So Fluxy gets it done. But is it fast enough? They had a time disadvantage. So the next attack here needs to basically be close to a time fail for them to win. If this attack ends with 15 seconds remaining, then this war ends in an exact tie on time. So that's the mark to beat for Muhammad Morawi. And we'll see who ends up taking this very big highlight match as we see the debuts of these teams here in the Iron Cup. But it is going to be a Queen Charger to Lalo. And it's got to be quick. He's going to do a recall, though. He does take a lot of damage out of the Queen right at the gate there and sets up a Flame Finger. But he needs to get the Queen redeployed here rapidly and start moving to the next phase here because every second is precious here. We will get the Scattershot under control. And then he can move into the Ricochet Cannon and the Molten Inferno. Lots of Flame Finger value right in the area, but time to set it up there is the biggest cost. Here comes the clan castle. Partial pull. A couple archers. They slow him down even more. Don't want a partial pull. You want to be able to pull it all at once so you can use the poison. So that's a couple extra few seconds there that could be critical to end here. But a nice golem and a balloon with a couple of headhunters go down to get the defensive king out of the way. Like he's got that under control here. Archer split off. But the queen is not taking the turn towards the town hall right now. She's going to take the scenic path here. She's going to have to loop all the way to the right and then circle back right now. And that could be a problem. We do have two Expos that will be hammering down on her at the same time as she circles around. And she is going to take the Scenic Path there that cost him more time. More traps going off on the Queen's Healers there. As we get the Kokolo down, but he already lost one of the Healers. But he's okay. He's okay. More Red Air Bombs. King able to get the Queen to take the turn. No, the Queen is taking a walk to the outside. Mohammed Morawi might be in trouble to not just... Maybe missed a tie, but also missed a triple as a whole. Come on, dude. Pull together here. King into the town hall. He's got the Phoenix, but he loses the healers there. Phoenix will pick it back up. I think he will secure the town hall. Not concerned about that, but he has to push this Lalo, and he has to push it quick. Queen stayed alive, though. At least she'll continue to get the extra cleanup done faster. 
But I feel like she's ultimately going to be stuck behind walls here. He's got about 30 seconds to close his attack out, or his team will lose. We're our champion moving through. Flame Flick is still moving. Hal reaches the backside, and he's got fire damage on the ground there for the Flame Flicker. He will need to potentially just manually open that to get the troops to go out there and speed things up. But there's multi for doing tons of damage. Queen beating through a wall. He's got 10 seconds to clean it up. He's got to move it. Queen stepping in. Got to hit it. No, wait. No, I was wrong on the time there. He's got 10 seconds now. 10 seconds to clean up here. He's got to finish it before 15 seconds left on the clock. Five, four, three, two, and he's going to miss. He's going to lose this war by literally five seconds. You've got to be kidding. You cannot make this up. There it is. Fluxy effectively gets the hold, even though it's a triple, it's a double perfect war. Draw on the board, but time advantage is going in the favor of all stars. And they're taking this week here, the round of 16 in the Iron Cup.